All right, first of all, David, thanks for joining us here on the show. It's really nice to meet you. So what I'm going to do today, um, I'm going to bring out a couple of names from your younger days. Okay. Right? Cesar Lopez. Do you remember him? Yeah, of course I remember him. How important yeah. was he to your development? He, I think he was one of the most important person that throughout my career, you know, he, he gave me the chance to, to train with him when I was really, really young. And he was the, the, the guy that developed me in my young age. So um, a lot of the values that I have and a lot of the values that I have while training and everything is because of him. And he was one of the main reasons that I moved to England. He, he pushed the club and he pushed me to try and, and have my, my trial at Blackburn at, at the age of 15. And it was because of him that he, he pushed me that hard and he pushed the club that hard to get that trial that I got the opportunity to sign from, uh, for Blackburn. Yeah, because uh, what's the one thing that you remember, one of the lessons he taught you, whether in life or in football? Always give your best when you're training. Mm -hmm. Never give, uh, never leave anything behind. Um, just train us is the is your last day. So that that is one of the values that I always try and carry uh, try to carry carry on with me. Sometimes, obviously, it's, it's not possible. <laughs> sometimes you have uh, bad days and everything, but uh, I try to give my best every every time I am on the pitch, especially in training and on matches. Well, you talk about when you first moved to England and you opened up before about how sometimes it's quite difficult for you as a young footballer, yeah. right, in a new country. But you connect it with the Moles family. Yeah. How, I mean, how, how much of a role did they play for you? What did they do for you that helped you so much? So, the, Stefan is uh, the middle brother that he played for Blackburn as well. And uh, I think he's four, four years younger than me. Right. So um, he played for Blackburn and then Blackburn introduced me to the, to the Moles family and the first few years, the first year uh, I was going around for, for Sunday, uh, for Sunday roast and, and oh, all nice. that. So, and then there was one year that I had to stay for Christmas that I couldn't go back home for Christmas and obviously they, they told me to stay at the house to spend Christmas with them and, and the whole family. They have a really, really close family like my family back home and for me now they are my English family I always so for example Becky I call them mom and to Natasha Victoria Elliot and Stefan they, they're like my brothers so you still keep in touch with them yeah very close all to the them. time yeah, yeah. yeah of course and obviously I've I met the the cousins and all that and uh, they they were very welcoming um, to me they invited me to the weddings they invite me to like I said, Christmas and, and parties at, the, at their houses and when they have the birthdays and everything. So mm. it was, um, it was uh, uh, something that I needed in, in the time, at the time as well. <clears throat> Obviously at the age of 17, spending Christmas by, by yourself, it wasn't, it wasn't the right thing. So they were, they were really, really keen of me going over and staying over to, to spend Christmas with them. Well, they played a big role to be for you to be a player yeah. that you are today. Yeah, of course, of Let course. They they always followed me everywhere and they tried to come to the matches. And obviously up north it was easier when when I was playing for Blackburn, but down here they came a few times. They they come to London and obviously they're going to be now. Uh, they're going to come over to watch the the City game on Sunday and and everything. So now uh, really really happy that I met them at the at the age of 16, 17. That because. They helped me a lot. Yeah, those are important. Yeah. So let's talk about your football then. You're what, about six feet or so? so six one, yeah. Six one, yeah. Sorry, I got that one no, it's inch fine. wrong. It's fine. So what do you do? What do you do in your training regime to help you say so that you, to ensure that you're not physically overwhelmed by bigger attackers? No, I don't think I don't think that's some some part of my of my training. I think I just have to focus on myself and uh, I don't think you can see the difference of, of height when when I collect a lot of crosses and, yeah. and I save shots. So I think the height, obviously if you're very small is, is different, but I don't think I'm, I'm a small keeper. I'm just a normal height that can, I can cover every, every single aspect of the, of the game. And, and I think it showed every, every time that I come for crosses and uh, I save shots. So it's not, nothing that concerns me. So you say that height is not the most important thing when it comes to goalkeepers. It can't, it's not a restriction, so to speak. So what do you say as an advice to younger players who maybe don't have that height, but yet they want to pursue a career in goalkeeping? Just follow your dreams and, mm. and work hard and, and maybe say, let's say I'm, I'm 186, so 
I don't think that's a small for a keeper. Maybe if you are 175, that's that's a bigger a bigger difference. But if you if you want to be a goalkeeper, the first thing you have to enjoy enjoy it. And obviously, the people say we are different breed. <laughs> we are made by different breed, but it's it's true. We we put a face to the ball if we have to, and and the the thing you have to do is enjoy and follow your dreams, and don't take it too too harsh on you if, if it's not going well you have to to be focused and, and try to give your best but always learn and and try to to be the, the best that you can that you can be and and maybe you won't you won't make it but the main the main thing is enjoy what you do you played a lot of futsal when you were younger yeah. so if you weren't a goalkeeper which position would you play in uh, I, I don't know I think uh, I wouldn't mind playing as a six Oh, okay. uh, but that's a lot of running. But <laughs> but yeah, as a six, I wouldn't mind because I'm comfortable on the ball. Uh, if you put me now as a six, I don't think I could do the job. But <laughs> if if I trained when I was younger to be an outfield player, I think I could have I could have been. Would you right. would you model your game after a player that you looked up to if you were that number six? Yeah, of course. I think I've now thinking now in the nowadays of uh, Rodri's for me is one of the best. Uh, holding midfielders with along with with Declan, you know, mm. and completely different players, but that's the two ones that I would look up to. Well, at Brentford, you had someone like Ivan Tony to be winning the aerial duels of some of yeah. your passes. Here, you have Kai Havertz to be at the end of your kicks. How often do you have conversations with the aerial targets of the team to ensure that you guys have, you know, the right communication, understanding, and where to pass? I think you you have to you you have to speak to not only just them you have to speak with the players mm. around around them to win the second balls and because uh, maybe they don't win the the first ball but you might have a runner behind or or someone in front to collect the second ball but that's is that uh, communication and that feeling and that connection that I had obviously with with Ivan and now I have with with Kai and some other players that we we target so is. You, you have to speak and it's that connection that you and that bond that you create by training and, and playing together so sometimes when I was at Brentford mm. even without looking I knew where Ivan was and, and I was just putting the ball there because I knew it was going to be there same with maybe with Kai now that I know where he's going to be and I just try to, to hit it to him to, to collect and I know where, where he is and I know that someone is going to be around him to collect the second ball if he's not winning the, the duel or if he's flicking it, I know someone is running behind. So mm. you, have to, you have to speak to them and boys, it's more, most important the, the connection and, and the, the bond that you have inside the pitch. Well, a photo went viral recently of you guys in the tunnel, some really intimidating photos. People are comparing it to the invincible photos <sighs> in the tunnel, right? And I noticed that there's a specific way that you guys line up. It's always obviously the skipper first, yep. then it's you, and then the big centre backs, and then Declan, Kai, and then it sort of form, follows sort of a physical stature. Let's yeah. put it that way. Is that on purpose? And who decided the lineup? No, I don't, I don't know if it's on purpose. I think just people that when they're ready, they're ready, and some people take a bit longer to to get ready, and that's just. Obviously, you, you have to be focused on, uh, at that time. You are about to to go on the pitch to, for, a, for a football match that might decide the league and or might decide who's taking the, the three points. And you have to be focused and that's just the, the way we, we walk out. Right. Let's talk about this weekend then. There's a big one on Sunday. Yep. People are saying it potentially could decide the title. I think people are always going to compare Manchester City and Arsenal because of, of the manager, right? But right now, because Arsenal haven't won at the Etihad since 2015, do you feel right now Arsenal are in a better shape and have better control of games against City? And what's so different about them this time round? I think we we showed the whole the whole the whole year that we can beat any anybody anywhere, mm. and I think we have to be with that mentality to to go to the Etihad and and go for the three points from the start. Go. Um, so that's the most important thing. That's the most important thought that we have to get into our heads and that's the that's the message that we have to to send between us players the staff to the players and obviously the players and, and the club to to the fans that they're going to travel up and and they're going to have to to play a big part for uh for us to to try and win the game and they're going to have to make a lot of noise i know we're going to be in 
in disadvantage on, of numbers of, of supporters, but I know how the they support us and I know how loud they are and they're gonna they're gonna right gonna go right behind us. So that's gonna be very, very important for us to, to get the three points on, on Sunday. Okay, that's brilliant. Can I ask you one last question? Yeah, and there's nothing to do with football. <laughs> go on. Um, only because I had this just the other day, days ago. <laughs> Have you tried the Saka sauce? The what? Bukayo Saka's Nando's sauce. No, I'm not a big fan of Nando's, I'm right, sorry. Okay. I'm not I'm not a big fan of Nando's. So, so you're not gonna try his sauce, mm, not for him. Uh, if he brings it to the to the training ground, I might try it. Okay. But I wouldn't go to Nando's just for, for a meal, no. Okay, brilliant. Thank you so much, David. <laughs> Thank All you. the best for the rest of the season. Thank you very much.